Our desire is that the benefits of yoga and a more conscious diet be a powerful tool of self-transformation in your hands. Start today your inner journey together with Sadhguru through a method totally online. Click the link in the description of this video and learn more. Hi. One thing that you do, one thing that everybody who considers themselves some kind of sadhaka or a seeker, one thing that you must do to yourself is, you are absolutely truthful to yourself. If you're also truthful to everybody around you, you will get other kinds of benefits with people. But I will not go that far right now. With yourself, you are one hundred percent truthful. Otherwise, all kinds of tricks keep happening. To be truthful to yourself is not a easy thing because there is lifetimes of habit of simply bullshitting yourself. And of course, <laughs> you've gone through much religious training, many of you <laughs> So you have a very sophisticated way of bullshitting yourself. See, uh, this is an unfortunate condition that a whole lot of human beings are in, in their experience. In their personal experience, life is like me versus the universe. Being in competition with the universe is a stupid thing to do. That's not a competition you must get into. Hello? Me versus the universe is a bad competition to get into. So, this is why yoga… Yoga does not mean twisting and turning your body. The word yoga means union. Right now it's me versus the universe. This is just your psychological condition. This is not the reality. Even when you feel utterly lonely, are you still breathing? So you're transacting with the world, isn't it? Yes? You only can't get along with the people around you, but atmosphere is okay with you, food is okay if it tastes good, water is okay. You have transaction with the world, isn't it? Your existence is constantly an engagement with the universe, but your mind becomes against the universe. If you create a psychological condition that you're against or you're in competition with the universe or the cosmos, obviously you will feel crushed for small things. Little things will crush you. When I say little things, maybe you failed your examination, maybe you got thrown out of this university, maybe you got fired from a job, Maybe somebody ditched you, maybe something else like this happened. These are all small things between life and death. Because you came here with nothing, isn't it? When you die, there is no container service for you. You die with nothing. In spite of that, most people have turned their homes into warehouses. Most people are carrying such a huge baggage on their head, as if they're carrying the whole universe on their head. This is their own psychological condition. Your thought and emotion is what you're talking about, right? When are you going to figure out how to handle your thought and emotion? Not hers, not hers, not his, yours. When are you going to learn how to handle my thought and my emotion? at the end of your life. The only problem really with life is just this. Most human beings have taken themselves too seriously. They don't understand… You've seen on the computer screen these pop-ups? Yes. You are a pop-up on this planet. You pop up for two seconds and pop out. No, no, you must see, countless number of people like you and me have walked this planet. Oh, they were also big people. Where are they? All? Topsoil? Topsoil or no? Or maybe you're planning to go to heaven. Hello? Anybody who talks about a place other than this place, has a better place than this, this is a crime against humanity. My fundamental work 
is to destroy all heavens so that people will learn to live well here. All these idiots who made a hell out of themselves, they want to go to heaven. They made a mess out of this place and then they want to go to heaven. I am asking you, do you have any proof? Do you have any proof that you are not already in heaven and messing it up? Do you have any proof? You are already in heaven, making a mess out of it, yes? Simply because you are not even learning how to handle your basic faculties of thought and emotion, isn't it? Your only justification is, everybody is like this only, that's how it is in a madhouse. That is how it is in a madhouse, only a doctor looks crazy. So when are you going to handle it? Slowly, at the age of sixty, I'm asking, when will you learn how to handle my thought, how to handle my emotion, how to handle my body, how to handle my chemistry? When are you going to figure this? At the end of your life? Because this culture has grown, when to do spirituality means when you're seventy, when you're no good for anything else. No, at the earliest possible time, whatever is most profound about you, not about heavens, about this life, everything that you need to know, you must know soonest, isn't it? My whole thing is, I'm constantly reminding people, there is only one enemy in your life, that's you. If you fix this one person, everything is fine with you. Yes or no? You have only one enemy, that's yourself. If you fix this one person, this is a wonderful life. So this is the beauty of your life, that this moment you can be whichever way you want to be. Now this freedom is what humanity is struggling with right now. If you are suffering your bondage, it's all right, but you are actually suffering your freedom. If your life was as fixed as any other creature's life, you would not experience any stress, you would go through it effortlessly. Now your problem is, there is freedom to be whichever way you want to be the next moment. This is what you're struggling with. If you're suffering your bondage, it's all right. If you're suffering your freedom, that's a tragedy, isn't it? Your life is not a tragedy because this happened or that happened. Your life is a tragedy because everything is happening and you're missing it. Yes? This did not happen, that did not happen, that's not a tragedy. Sun came up in the morning, but you cannot experience it. You're breathing, you cannot experience that. You're alive, you cannot enjoy that. This is a tragedy, isn't it? Yes or no? What happened, what did not happen is not the point. The most significant aspect of your life is that you're alive right now. Is that so? Everything else is secondary and incidental, is that so? Yes, but you are not aware of your aliveness, you are busy with your psychological nonsense. Your thoughts, your emotions have become… your psychological reality has become far more important than your existential reality. What it means is, you are so enamored with your own petty creation that you are completely missing the grandeur of creator's creation, that's what it means. You do all kinds of things, but if you truly value creation, the best thing that you can do is to pay attention and to experience it, isn't it? Yes or no? What is the greatest tribute? Suppose somebody cooks some nice food, and presented it in front of you, what is the greatest tribute? That you write a poetry on it or you joyfully eat it, which is better? Somebody has done a work of art, you ignore it and give him an award, is that great? Or you truly appreciate and enjoy it, is that great? If you truly value the creator and the creation, the best thing is that you lived blissfully, that is the best appreciation for the creator. One more year gone, are you still alive? And what are you alive to? What are you dead to? When was the last time you saw a full moon or a sunrise? 
When was the last time you gazed at a mountain or the ocean? Or you looked at a butterfly fly? When was the last time you saw a flower blossom or kicked a ball? When was the last time you smiled at yourself? When was the last time you looked back and could laugh at yourself, come alive? Your role in the existence is so small. Everything that happens to you, largely is being done to you. Are you spinning the planet? No. Could you live if it di did not spin? Could you live? No. Are you managing the atmosphere? No, you're spoiling it but you're not managing it. <laughs> are you making your heart beat? No. Are you breathing? Everything that's vital to life is happening, isn't it? Your business is just to become receptive to the bounty of life, to know life in its fullest way. If you're willing to be blissful, joyful, do something worthwhile about yourself or you're willing to do something worthwhile about ten people around you, we will take care of your living also. All you have to do is, to whom? Just the creation. Isn't it big enough to bow down? Isn't it big enough to bow down? Just the creation. On top of that you want one more thing? Isn't creation itself big enough to bow down, I'm asking? Isn't the mountain big enough to bow down? I find even the tree and the uh, ant big enough to bow down because not one of them can we figure. All your intelligence, you can't figure a leaf upon this tree, one leaf. So, just the sheer intelligence of everything that is happening, when you can't figure anything, what do you do? That's all I said. Stay in Upasana because anyway your role is so minor in this existence that tomorrow morning if you evaporate, no problem. Only if you leave your mess here and go, problem. But if you simply evaporate, no problem for anybody, isn't it? Yes or no? So your role in your own life is so minor, so very minor, everything is being done to you, just everything. So, how can you be the hero? When you have a two-bit role, if you think you are a hero, you are making a serious mistake, isn't it? That's all I am talking about. I am not talking about doing any great spiritual sadhana. But if you, are, if you live in truth, that is the sadhana, what else? To stop the lies that you are creating, that is all the sadhana. Searching for truth, knowing truth does not mean you have to go in search of it somewhere. It's not hiding behind the mountain, it's on this side, you know. Right now this part of the planet is dark, so will you go looking on the other side? No, it's here. Truth means just this. Whatever there is, is truth. Whatever you have made up is a lie, that's all there is, isn't it? And you being a hero in this existence is your rubbish. It's got nothing to do with reality. So if you understand that, you understand you have a very minor role in the existence, not just in the making of the existence, in your own life. Even if something as simple as breath or heartbeat is left in your hand, you will be a complete mess within a minute. Yes or no? So, I'm not saying anything new, not a teaching, just reminding you the reality of what your life is. And that's all living in truth means, that you're not made up anything. You're not writing your own story, you're, you're trying to live life. If you live life, you can only live it the way it is. 
Only if you make up a story, you can make your own story, isn't it? If you are doing fiction, you can make it up the way you want. If you're living life, you can live life only the way it is. There is no other way to live. So do not think it's some kind of a teaching. That's how life is. So just live it, don't make up any story. If you make up an, a story which is not true and believe it is true, when your script comes to an end, then you'll be at loss because <laughs> there's nothing. <laughs> if you go with reality, it is on, whether you're alive or dead, it's on. You being with it is the safest way to be, best way to be. That's the only way you can experience life. Otherwise, you will experience the treachery of your own words, nothing else. Recognize people around you for the best that you have seen in them. In recognizing the best instead of the worst, you will kindle, nurture and receive the best of everyone. Whatever you pay attention to will naturally grow, at least for you. Every human being that you meet, there's a good side to them, there is a nasty side to them. If you pay attention to the nasty side, your mind will be preoccupied with the nastiness. Somebody else's nastiness will become yours and because of that, you will receive more and more of that from all around you. If you pay attention to the best, <laughs> even though in some people it may be a minuscule, if you pay attention to the best, it will grow, at least in your mind, in your experience it will grow. There is a good chance it will grow in them also. Well, when you live in this world, when you're active, so many people will say and do variety of nasty things to you. But if you pay attention to that, you will stop in your tracks. If you pay attention to that, that may exist even in those people who are continuously spewing venom. One thing is, your mind shall never become nasty. Another thing is, there is always a possibility even they will turn around. I've conducted programs in the prisons, both in India and the United States. I've met some of the criminals or convicts who have done terrible things in their life, but Many of them have transformed themselves because of simple forms of yoga. Above all, when they were with me, they were absolutely wonderful people. This is what you can do. You heard of Anangoli Mala turning into a sage. You have heard of Valmiki turning into a great sage. Like this, there are many stories, only a few became famous. Many others are there who have transformed their nastiness to their wonderful nature, simply because somebody paid attention to their wonderful nature. So please, whoever you meet, whatever the best you see in them, you don't have to imagine something. Whatever the best you see in them, pay attention to that. Hold that as a standard for those people to rise to, rather than holding their nastiness in your mind and allowing them to descend to their worst. This is a possibility that you have an opportunity to exercise every moment of your life. Let's make it happen. If you look into your own mind, if you look into your own persona, what you consider yourself to be. Normally what you call as a personality is essentially different levels of constipation. I don't like this, I can't stand this, I can't do this, I can't do that, I only like this, I cannot like that. Different levels of constipation. 
What causes this constipation? Constipation in its uh, physiological sense means constriction of a tract. Here, it's constriction of one's mind and consciousness that it's held. There's no free flow of life. It's restricted because your ability to experience your life is only through the instruments of your body and your mind. Either your body or your mind in some way constricted means your ability to experience life also gets constipated. This happens in many ways. <laughs> You will be surprised, many of you think you've grown out of those things, but when you're ten years of age, your mama, your uncle, I mean, your mama said something, he called you an idiot. Ah, now you're fifty, but still forty years ago he called you an idiot, it still bothers you. When you see his face, he called me an idiot. <laughs> like this it goes on. The more concretized your persona is or your personality is, the more nicks and wounds you carry upon yourself. And these are not physiological wounds to heal because they are self-inflicted wounds these are being carried as badges of life's experience, so they don't go. Because of this, I like this guy, I don't like this guy, I love this person, I hate this person, I can't stand this person, all this has happened. Next twenty-four hours, you must do this. All these mamas, friends, enemies, nonsense, you don't have to tell them, I love you. Not necessary. Within yourself, you must come to a total sense of acceptance of everything. So, somebody said something, somebody did something, somebody stepped on your foot, somebody stepped on your head. Twenty-four hours, it's a small prescription, only for twenty-four hours come to an absolute acceptance of everything. Your mental things, your emotional things, your bodily things, every damn thing, and the social things, just simply accepting it as it is. You don't have to do anything with anybody, just within yourself. If you just do this, life will happen in a lot… Of all the things in the world, of all the things that a human being can do, why yoga? Everything that human beings can do is essentially an expression of who they are. Somebody sings a song, somebody dances, somebody writes a book, somebody paints a picture. Whatever else we do is an expression of who you are. You may be conscious of it, you may be unconscious of it, but still everything that you say, everything that you do, everything that comes out of you is essentially an expression of who you are. So yoga in that way is 
diametrically opposite to this because it's not an expression of who you are. It's about determining as to who you are. It's about determining as to what you want to be. Changing the very fundamentals of one's existence. Today there is substantial <laughs> medical and scientific evidence to show that the very fundamentals of the activity of your brain, your chemistry, even your genetic content can be changed by practicing different systems of yoga. This needed uh, no confirmation because we've always witnessed this. But today there is scientific data to prove this. So this is not an expression of who you are, this is about determining the nature of you wish to… who you wish to be, changing the fundamental ingredients which has made you who you are. So yoga as a system needs much more involvement than any other things that one… any other other forms of things that we do, which are merely an expression of who we are. If you find full expression through any particular activity, it may also leave you somewhat transformed. If you cook with all your heart, some transformation may happen. Yes? Taking care of a cow can change your life, you know. If you sing with all your heart, some transformation may happen. If you dance with all your heart, some transformation may happen. But that is only a certain impact that is happening because of absolute involvement in a particular activity. But essentially that activity by nature is an expression of who you are. It is not determining the nature of who you are. So when we transform our activity, not as an expression of who we are, because who wants to find expression like this in the morning? Definitely not, isn't it? So it is not an expression, it is a method, it is a means, it's a technology through which you can change the shape of who you are, literally also, otherwise also. You can change the very shape of who you really are right now that can be transformed. Because who you are real right now as a person is a combination of things. Genetic material, before that the karmic substance that you carry, because of that you s chose a certain womb, so the genetic material and since the moment you were born, whatever kind of impressions that have gone into you in the form of variety of experiences, situations, thoughts, emotions, relationships, associations, whatever else you have imbibed, all these things make you a certain kind of person. When you say, I am a certain kind of person, what you are saying is, I have this kind of compulsions. When you say, I am this kind of person, what you are saying is, this is the kind of compulsions that I identify myself with, so I am this kind of a person. People, you know, it's a very Western thing but it's very much there in India today because a lot of Indians are far more Western than West. You know, if you go all the way West, you come back to India. So they are much more Western than Westerners are today. <laughs> so people say, I am a morning person, I am an evening person. So what they mean is, 
morning, I cannot wake up in the morning. That means I'm a evening person. I can't stay awake in the evening, so I'm a morning person. Not only that, people… it's going far, you know, some are blackberry people, some are apple people. It's all getting… world is getting divided in so many ways. They're not just instruments that you use and keep it down, it's you get identified with it. So there are chapati people, there are rice people, there are dosa people, there are idli people, you know, <laughs> all kinds. <laughs> So, what kind you are is essentially a certain type of compulsions. So you set yourself into the process of yoga because you don't want to be this kind or that kind. That you will be the kind that you're required to be in a particular moment. If it's morning, you're a morning person. If it's evening, evening you're a evening person. If you're not required to be a person, you're not a person. <laughs> that is, you become flexible. This flexibility we start working with your body to start with. Afterwards, it should come to every aspect of your life. Your physical structure, your psychological structure, your emotional structure, your karmic structure, everything should become flexible that it can be whatever it is required to be. It is not stuck being this way or that way. So yoga as a process, yoga as a method, yoga as a technology, yoga as a science is essentially to break the limitations of a certain concretization that happens which we call as personality. To evolve from being a person to a presence. If you're a person, that means you have made a shell out of yourself. You formed a shell, within that shell only you can operate. If you break this shell, you will no more be a person, but simply a presence. As life is, as God is, just a presence. If it can be encased in a shell, it becomes a person. So yoga means slowly you're working on making the shell thinner and thinner, more and more porous, that one day you can exist without a shell. So essentially, in your experience, yoga means morning, Why the sadhana, the way it is, is all aspects of physicality are cyclical in the universe. Planets are going around the sun, the solar system are moving, everything in the galaxy, in the cosmos is cyclical. The more and more you are identified with your physical system, the more and more cyclical you are also. Your experiences are cyclical, the process of life is cyclical. If you watch carefully enough, even the situations that you face in your life come in cycles. So yoga means on one level to break the cycle of life. What is a circle right now, we want to open it up and make it a straight line. Because if you are going in circles, if I say you are going in circles, what does it mean to you? you're not going anywhere. It just gives you an impression that you're going somewhere, but you're not really going anywhere, you're going through the same thing again and again. So yoga means to open up the circle and stretch it out like a straight line, that if you follow the line, you go somewhere, you're not going round and round. Nature is not going to release you so simply. You have to work at it and work at it and work at it. Otherwise, you must be happy doing the circle. A circle also can be described as a circus. If you become conscious, if the whole thing looks like a circus, 
If you are not conscious, you can only see three feet in front of you, then it's all real. If you can see the whole circle of your life, suddenly it becomes like a circus. Once you realize it's a circus, you don't want to go through the circus again and again. <laughs> only if your vision is too limited, you can see only three feet in front of you, everything is real for you. If you open up and see the whole circle, the way you're going, it looks like a circus and definitely you don't want it to continue forever, you want to do something about it. So these cycles, these repetitive cycles of compulsiveness is coming because there are various types of memories in the system. Memories, karmic memories, information essentially means memory, isn't it? It is the foundations of information that we carry which has constructed this body the way it is, to live in it and not to be off it will not come easy. I'm not saying it's difficult, but it needs to be worked at. The sadhana is just about this. However simple the sadhana is, every day if it is worked at, slowly one can see a certain level of freedom happening within you step by step, maybe inch by inch, maybe micro millimeter by a micro millimeter. But nobody can say it is not releasing you, it will slowly release you. If you want to go rapidly, a lot more to do. You don't mind going slowly, something to do. Power of the life energy that is the basis of creation within you. Sit with your hands and legs uncrossed, back rested. Head should not be rested. Keep your hands upon your thighs, palms facing upward, your feet slightly apart, uncrossed. Take a deep breath and as you exhale, relax into it. Take another deep breath and as you exhale, relax even more into it. Take one more deep breath. This time the relaxation should be total. Now visualize yourself standing in a garden. Feel the grass under your bare feet. See what is around you. Feel all the sensations, the sun, the breeze. Feel all the sensations of standing there in the garden all by yourself. Now see that your body is becoming lighter and lighter. Feel the lightness spreading through your body. Your body is becoming very, very light. It is becoming so light that slowly you're lifting off the ground. You are beginning to float. You are about six inches above the ground, floating. Slowly, you are moving upward. You are two feet above the ground. You are moving further upward. You are five feet above the ground. 
see how it feels. All the sensations, you are floating five feet above the ground. You are moving further up, you are ten feet above the ground. Look down and see how everything seems. Feel everything around you, the breeze, the sun, the sounds and the smells, feel everything. You are ten feet above the ground, floating. Now you're moving further upward, twenty feet above the ground. See how it feels. You are moving further up, fifty feet above the ground. Look down and see how the garden that you just took off from looks. How the buildings around look, the trees, the plants, the people on the street, see how everything seems to you, fifty feet above the ground, floating. Now you have moved one hundred feet above the ground, look down and see how it feels. See how the buildings are, how the people are, how the trees and everything else is, how everything seems being one hundred feet above the ground. You are moving further up, you are reaching towards two hundred feet. Look down and see how everything seems from this height. Feel all the sensations, the coolness of the breeze, the sunlight and all the other sensations of floating two hundred feet above the ground. Look around and see how everything seems floating two hundred feet above the ground. You are moving further upward. You are five hundred feet above the ground. See how it feels, all the sensations. Look around and see how the whole town seems when you are five hundred feet above the ground, floating. You are going further up, one thousand feet. See how it feels. Look around and see, as far as you can see, how everything seems floating one thousand feet above the ground. Now you're moving up very quick, five thousand feet. See how it feels. Look around and see. Feel the sensations, the coolness of the breeze, the clouds and everything else. See how it feels, floating five thousand feet above the ground. You are among the clouds, now beginning to move horizontally, moving, flying through the space. 
see how everything feels feel the wind on your face now you're moving through the space very rapidly 5000 feet above the ground you have gone far away from where you started you have traveled far away from where you started look down and see what is beneath you from 5000 feet above the ground the terrain is changing rapidly you are moving over a very dense forest you are moving over a very dense forest you see a dense forest beneath you stretched in all directions now you have reached a point where in every direction that you see you see only a dense forest cover you see a thick forest cover beneath you stretched in all directions Now slowly you are coming down four thousand feet see how it feels three thousand feet two thousand feet One thousand feet, and now you see a small clearing in the middle of this dense forest. Five hundred feet, two hundred feet. One hundred feet. See how everything feels. The forest. This little clearing. You are slowly dropping towards that small clearing. Fifty feet above. the clearing you notice a small lovely cottage twenty feet you see the cottage clearly now in this small clearing in the middle of the dense forest Ten feet Five feet Much closer to the ground Just two feet above the ground slowly your feet your bare feet on touching the ground
feel all the sensations of being here in a small clearing within this 